Good morning, my friend. I, I hope you can get a word in edgewise, but, but <laughs> between be, it'll be difficult, us. but I'll try. D- d- do this. Uh, talk a little bit about um, how you got to this point. You know, you don't have to go back to 1962. You know, but but um, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't just wake up, you know, and become a computer whiz. So, right. kind of walk us through how that happened. Well, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, my parents uh, own businesses, so I, I kind of saw that growing up, and kind of knew that. You know, that I wanted to work for myself someday, even before I even got into IT. So I, I think that that was, you know, a lot of the, the driver behind me, you know, that propelled me into eventually wanting to go and work for myself. But, you know, it did start, as Mike said, that uh, working for a lot of the big businesses and seeing, now this is going back into the 2000s time, or even having your own email server, you know, or having email service, uh, these were still kind of emerging technologies, if you will, certainly for small businesses, right? You didn't have a lot that was afforded to you. Um, and I saw that there was a lot of potential. This was back in, I'm going to get a little nerdy here, back in what they called the ASP days. But this is back when the pre-cloud era was starting to develop. And um, kind of could see the writing on the wall of how technology was starting to develop and how you could take it and, and mature into helping small business. So what's interesting about this is there's a, I know a lot of people like you, sharp, skilled people, but there's no way they're actually going to build a business out of what they know because there's more to it than just being able to know how to do it. Right. you got to be able to sell it. So talk about how you jumpstart that and get it up off the ground. Uh, relationships, really. I mean, I think that's the most important piece is, uh, you know, having good relationships with people, um, being, I, you know, pragmatic and simple when you have conversations with businesses, as, you know, Mike kind of talked about earlier in the segment, getting to know a business and talking to them, earning the trust. I think that goes a long way. In addition to it, certainly helps to know what you're talking about. Right. Um, but I think that, that relationships are really the key drivers, and you rely on your customers and the relationships you have to, to, you know, to give you other leads and opportunities. You, you know, one thing that, I, that I'll mention with Mike, Mike is as technically astute um, as anyone that you'll know, but uh, he really separates himself, Joe, understanding that business drives the technology. He also separates himself because he's very social. Um, so when he's going to sit down, and he have doesn't a, look nerdy. I'll be honest. Yeah, with right. You. He no, really and, don't. And in a normal conversation, he has a way of being able to dummy down the technical stuff for people like you and I, so that we understand it. And, Skippy, and, did my big brother just call me stupid? Well, I, I'm almost positive. Well, we're still he did. not sure you didn't have your printer just plugged into the. <laughs> <laughs> So it's 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 very having nothing to do with the business side, right? Of running right. a business, and you obviously have to have that skill set. So, uh, Mike, what was the most getting from where you started to where you are today? Can can you identify the the, the single most challenging piece? Probably, well, managing growth certainly is is one of those. Managing people, uh, for those of us who start in technology, it's real easy to you know to work with systems and applications. Uh, that changes pretty quickly once you start having to manage people. And, ah, and welcome to the small <laughs> business. The minute you got to hire right, somebody, that's right. Um, that's been probably the most difficult piece. You know, being a motivator. You know, leading people. Um, you certainly have to, to learn to change, you know, and, and, and diversify yourself and what you're good at. T- talk, talk about that for a minute, because there's a lot of small business people out there that are going through this right now. Walk, walk us through the first couple of hires and how that process was in your head, because I know that, that those are the tough ones. <laughs> Those are the ones that I would rather not mention. <laughs> <laughs> they were mistakes on the front end. Right, for every for every one good one, you probably have one or two bad ones. Yeah. it's definitely it's a uh, uh, it, it's it's an art, and you know that's that's a lot of Mike's background right there is being yeah. able to, you know, to find good resources and place them. Uh, coming from, you know, over a decade uh, pr- of experience before starting WinCourse. You know, that just wasn't something that I was completely prepared for. Uh, so you kind of have to, you know, that's on-the-job training right there. And you just have to propel through it and find resources and find help. Before Mike came on board, were you your best salesperson? I was the only salesperson. <laughs> so, so you would do it. customers, you'd... right. 
Right. Yeah. So you'd sell it, and then you'd right. figure out a way to make sure it was working, too. That's right. That's right. I spent a lot of time you know, deploying the technology, making sure that whatever uh, solution we were going to provide our customers, that it was the best that we could provide. So spent a lot more time doing that than I was actually out there selling. How, how did you decide what products and services you wanted to provide your clients? How did you make that call? Uh, watching the industry and having a lot of conversations with businesses, trying to stay up on the trends. Uh, that, that if you can see, you know, kind of what's maturing out there and kind of what people need. What are the top, say, five types of? Uh, can I call them drivers? Am I, am I okay with that? Or products or service that you're providing right now? Actual products and services. Um, so remote access. I mean, Mike, Mike mentioned that. That's really probably one of the biggest drivers for us. Especially today, we're seeing businesses that are expanding or diversifying, and that expansion can just be we're we're hiring people to work from home. Right. We want to be able to acquire talent outside of the Statesville area. Um, and to be able to do that, they need to be able to access your applications and your data you know, from remote locations. So that's probably one of the biggest things that we do is we enable businesses really to be anywhere and to be able to retain talent from any location. I mean, we've got customers as far as Anchorage, Alaska, and we've had customers use our systems really all over, all over the world. Now, Mike was telling me that, uh, the, the, I'm going to call it a server, right? So this is where you are housing all of this information, right? This is something that you own, or do you have a third party with that? How does that work? Because sooner or later, somebody got to have a computer somewhere, right? Right, right. <laughs> so we've got a data center down in Charlotte, and there we own and operate all of our own equipment. So this is networking equipment. These are backups. These are storage devices. These are servers. So there's a lot of... All the stuff I don't want to buy. All the right, and be careful. Stuff. Be careful taking them down this road because it won't be long before you. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. You start, yeah. 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 Start talking. He I stepped into it, quickly. didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I'm just letting you know. Really. <laughs> yeah. It was not my intention right. to right. ta take you down this techie no, that's road. All right. That's all right. I, I won't get too too techy, but um, well, that is something that makes us a little bit different. That uh, that kind of the buck stops with us. And that's been real foundational for us for a long time is, you know, there's lots of different IT providers out there. You've got your Googles and your Amazons and your Microsofts. And you can, you know, you can get a lot of great services with them. But as an IT provider, um, the buck doesn't necessarily stop with me. And so we like to talk about that, that if we're going to provide a service, we own it and operate it from start to finish. And, and that's the key here, because I know I can contact Microsoft or whatever, but goodness gracious, man, I, I if I'm going to dig into this and let this be a part of my, my company and my business, I'm picking up the phone calling you. Right. I want Mike. Right. You, you know? So, so I do not want Dabib to tell me <laughs> <laughs> we want to fix this on Tuesday. Right. That is something that we do. Um, is you know every company's got vendors right and a lot of even the companies that we do business with have other IT vendors it could be their internet service provider as part of the services that we provide we'll manage that relationship with those vendors as well and so save me key. 2 hours on to the phone that's exactly hours. correct right cuz if you're if if you're spending time on the stuff that we do then you're not making money you're not moving your business forward and we recognize that and that i got to be honest with you man that statement alone like just mentally I felt like a weight just lifted off my shoulders. If I can just hand all of that to you and say, Mike, solve this problem, right. whatever it is. Right. And recognize, so you, so 24 by 7 by 365, you're a small business. Something goes wrong. You don't know what it is. Won't print, can't connect, blah, blah, whatever. You call the number. Someone answers the number. Someone helps you. 